Welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Matthew and we are building an all aluminium AC Cobra. Previously we were working on the rear of the Cobra, now we're making a start on the front. I've got a couple panels made up already, but the front of the Cobra is going to be made up of much smaller panels than the rear. So that's going to mean a lot more welding and a lot more hammer and dolly work. So we've decided to take this opportunity to talk a little bit more about using a hammer and a dolly as well as welding. So follow me to the workbench where we've got a little piece prepared. I've gone ahead and just made up this little test piece here. Now this is the exact same way we do it on the Cobra. So first and foremost, we just need to make sure that our area is nice and clean. Secondly, we need to make sure that we have a good fit up. The better your fit up, the better your end result. So now we're gonna go ahead and just planish these tacks to get everything nice and smooth. And once we've planished it, we'll grind down the tacks to get an even weld. So this is the hammer and dolly I'm gonna to use to planish the tacks for this panel. So. When I'm holding the dolly, I'm just using a couple fingers, just like this, two to make sure I'm holding the dolly level, and the opposite two just to make sure that I'm running along the weld bead. That way I can be sure my dolly is exactly where I need it. We'll go into a little bit more about dollies in a minute, but for now, let's get this done. Now that I've gone ahead and planished these tacks, it is almost good enough for a weld. We just needed to make sure that everything was nice and smooth, which it is. Next step is I'm just gonna grind it so that my weld is as even as possible. I don't have any big lumps in the middle of my weld bead. So now that we've got this panel ready for welding, there's a couple things worth mentioning. For when you're welding aluminum, if you're gonna use a TIG welder, you need to have an AC TIG welder and a good argon gas. I like using rods of the parent material, but dealer's choice. Also, you need to make sure that you've got a nice sharp tungsten and a foot pedal. Foot pedal comes in very handy when welding sheet metal, especially smaller pieces like this. They're gonna heat soak very quickly and you need to be able to back off as you're welding. Okay, let's get going. Now that we've got this weld done, I'm gonna go over it with the die grinder, just remove any spots where I put a little bit too much filler, and then we'll use a hammer and a dolly, clean the weld, get the panels flowing again. You could also use the English wheel on a panel like this where it's a little bit smaller, but this one we're going to use a hammer and a dolly and then I'm going to use the little two inch sanding disc, grind off any of the last high spots, mask it up, use the orbital sander and this weld should be done.
as you can see, this weld is now done. If you were to spend a little bit more time on it, you could even get to a point where you could polish it and the weld would completely disappear. As far as hammers and dollies are concerned, there's a couple of things we can do with them. We can shrink, stretch, and change the arrangement of our panel. As far as shrink is concerned, I've got our same panel that we did earlier, and I've just put a bit of a dent in it. So you cannot simply just tap the dent down from the front. That's just going to change the arrangement. We need to have some support at the back to force that material to crush into itself and consolidate. So that is the role of our dolly, effectively shrinking that material back together. Once again, to consolidate this material and crush it in, we're going to use a hammer and a dolly. I'm going to hold the dolly like this so I can make sure that my dolly is nice and square underneath the panel and not make any waves. And then I'm going to work my way around the perimeter of the high spot, moving in, consolidating that material as I go. And we're going to move them in tandem in a little spiral pattern, working our way towards the center, effectively shrinking that material back to the required shape. So that's the basic technique behind shrinking a high spot. It works the same for bigger high spots as it does smaller high spots. You just want to move your way around. And when you hear the ting, that's how you know it's time to move on to the next spot. So as far as stretching is concerned, it is pretty much the exact opposite of shrinking. Instead of consolidating that material together, now we need to just spread it apart. Let's say for practical example, you need this piece to flow into a body line. This needs to come up. So that means this edge here needs to grow essentially stretching that material apart and creating a reverse. So again, I'm going to be using a hammer and a dolly for this. And unlike shrinking where I'm tapping until I hear the cling and then moving on, I'm going to be continuously trying to hit the dolly here. And as long as I'm hearing that cling, then I know I'm on dolly and stretching material out. All right, so that is the process of stretching. Just make sure you follow your template and keep working it till it comes up. Next up, we're gonna talk about changing the arrangement. Or for instance, tipping an edge, which comes in very handy for things like our boot edge here, or for instance, the edge of a wheel arch, something along those lines. So I've got this little piece of scrap and let's tip an edge on it. As far as tipping an edge is concerned, one of the best tips is weakening the edge first. So once you've got a line mark that you wanna tip on, what you're then going to do is just hold your dolly underneath on the line and hit on the edge of the dolly at a little 10 degree angle and that's going to weaken the aluminium and give us a spot for the aluminium to bend and get a nice tight radius on our bend. So let's mark a little line and we can tip it. Okay. If I take this out and flip it around, you should be able to see that we've got a good little line established where we've essentially just thinned that material out, weakening it, and given us the perfect spot to create a nice tight bend. Now I'm just going to continue and tip this to about 90. There we go. 
So that is essentially how you tip an edge. Now these skills are essential for anybody who wants to do the same kind of work that we do here. If this is something that you're interested in, I'd suggest making up your own test pieces and practicing these skills. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative and we'll see you again on the next one. Leave any questions you have in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe.